Welcome, everyone, to this event, um, Working in an Inclusive Economy. I think the title of this event is an interesting one. Uh, I think there's a tension in this title that's worth just touching on here briefly. There are ideas that we, each of us have as to what it means to work. What is the economy? What is business? Uh, we live in, in a world in which there's hyper-competitiveness, things are changing rapidly, there's some practical realities of what it means to work and do business. We also have ideas of what it means to be inclusive, to live in a sustainable economy. Uh, those ideas, I think, evoke uh, certain moral values. I think they evoke a certain sense of politics. And, and, and in that sense, I think that title bespeaks a certain uneasiness. How, do this, how does this all come together? How, in fact, do we work in an inclusive economy? There's a term that's, that's used more frequently these days called uh, stakeholder capitalism, different from what people traditionally think of as shareholder capitalism. Shareholder capitalism speaks about how the purpose of business and work is really to maximize profit for the owners, the shareholders. Stakeholder capitalism takes a much broader view. It says, look, the, the, the people that a business impacts are, are much larger uh, than the owners themselves. The stakeholders of a, of a company include the customers, includes the lives of the employees, the local communities, and in a much larger sense, the global uh, economy, particularly with respect to the environment. But there's an uneasiness about this. Just this past week, there was an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal really pushing back on this notion, saying this is really about political correctness and, and business should focus on, on business. Um, and that's really what brings us to this event today, to really look at this and understand how, how to live this. How is this possible, this working in an inclusive uh, economy? Part of also what generated this event uh, is another event that's coming up at the end of next month. Pope Francis has invited uh, a number of young uh, economists uh, and entrepreneurs, one of whom is on stage today, uh, to join him in Assisi uh, in, in Italy to look at this. Uh, how is this possible? What experiences can we look at? Um, what is a way forward? So in that context, let me introduce the folks that are on the stage here today. Uh, to my left is Giorgio Vitadini. He's the founder and president of the Foundation for Subsidiarity and the editor of the online newspaper Il Subsidiario. He is a member of the American Statistical Association. Uh, he's also a professor of statistics in the statistical department at the University of Milan. To my right is Carlos Martinez. He's the CEO of uh, a company called 376 Management Group. It's a real estate construction and consulting firm. Carlos has a degree in architecture from the Polytechnic University of Puerto Rico uh, and a master's candidate in real estate development from Georgetown University. So the format of, of this event today, we're going to start in a, in a, in a minute with uh, Giorgio Vitadini. He's going to give us an introduction to, uh, I think, the, the broad theme and how to begin to think about this. We'll then speak to Carlos here about his very interesting and specific experience in Puerto Rico. Uh, and then we'll turn to uh, Justin Welter, Laura Kelly, and Nick Stokeman to really explore this issue in, in specific situations here in the United States. Giorgio? Last year, the Pope wrote an open letter addressed to young economists and entrepreneurs, inviting them to the Free Days event in March 2020 in Assisi, entitled The Economy of Francesco. The purpose is to discuss a different kind of economy, uh, one that brings a life, not, to, not that, one that is inclusive and not exclusive, human and not uh, the humanizing, one that cares for an environment and not, does not despoil it. Then there is uh, the second encyclical by Pope Francis, Francis Laudato Si, where uh, he says that uh, this economy, the neoliberalist economy, is a voracious model, profit-oriented, and based on misconception on unlimited limited economic growth. What does it mean? That uh, until uh, the finance crisis, we could think that uh, the only kind of economy was this kind of economy. It was impossible to avoid it, or middle age, or market, or uh, development, or uh, uh, poverty. 
But now we understand that uh, this kind of economy, this neoliberalist economy, has many problems. First of all, uh, we understand that it's not true. The old uh, idea of uh, 18th century, for that, uh, a relapse of the selfishness of individuals the, in, uh, is uh, able to give us the uh, measure social uh, profit for everyone. It's not true that selfish of individual are able to give us uh, progress and uh, development, because we see a lot of problems. First of all, you know, the global warming, or I don't know if it's global warming is provoked, provoked by the man, human being, or for other reasons. But we see that the environment is, has a lot of problems. And that these problems are connected with this kind of economy, where you destruct uh, environment, forest, uh, you use too, mu too much uh, energy, too oil, too carbon, you are a pollution. Second, uh, injustice. You see that uh, there is uh, a big, uh, uh, there are big differences with rich and poor people. Oh, last uh, week, we knew that 1% uh, of uh, people uh, uh, have 49% uh, of richness in the world. It's impossible to go on in this condition. And then unemployment, the idea that you can have uh, development substituting human work with uh, uh, machines, devices. You understand that uh, this is not uh, the only way to go on. You, you, the Pope says that you shouldn't uh, uh, avoid and uh, destroy the progress, but you have to, 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 to build different solutions. Different solutions that are connected with a new idea that the United Nations built, uh, uh, that is sustainability. That means you should build a progress where I uh, see the uh, uh, United Nations, uh, an approach to the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. You, you see that uh, you have to take into account this. I repeat, it's not true that uh, you are selfish is good for everything. This is a 18th uh, philosophy, where man is a, a human being is uh, bad. Uh, you remember Hobbes, homini homini lupus. You remember a certain idea of uh, Adam Smith. Uh, self to, if you are selfish, you uh, help everyone. It's not true. You have to start from another idea of human being. The economy uh, wrong is not uh, in the rules. I am a statistician. I know that you have rules. You, you need uh, mathemat mathematics. You need uh, uh, to demonstrate uh, theorems. Uh, you need uh, econometrics. But if you start from another idea of human being, you can be, be build another economy. And, uh, uh, United Nations mm, summarized this in 17 uh, points, 17 points very, very different. Poverty, education, work, inequality, peace, justice, uh, access to natural resources, gender equality, and many more. But I think that uh, in this way, we are distracted. Too many points, different points. What does uh, Pope Francis suggest? That we can summarize three points to understand this. First of all, you can build an economy where a human being is at the center, but not a human being that is selfish. A human being that starts from wonder, from creativity, from uh, positivity, from goodness. It's not true that for building new economy and modern economy, you need this kind of position, where profit for, uh, for someone is uh, the goodness for everyone. 
you see, remember some movies at Wall Street, where you see this kind of uh, man who think about yourself, himself. It's not good. He's not the only man. Human being who build a new economy, human being who invent, is a, a human being able to uh, take into account reality. To, that says, uh, uh, I want a world where uh, other people can, can grow. And uh, I give you some example of this fact that uh, uh, it's not true that uh, selfishness and, uh, is better. For example, something that Mauro Prina, a manager who works in a big company in the US, give us, give me this morning. The same SMS uh, uh, companies uh, are de decreased in the US because finance uh, thought that they don't give too much uh, profit. They give uh, the 8%, 10%. Then they abandon this kind of real economy, and now this kind of companies uh, uh, disappeared in the US. Because it's not true that finance uh, always gives you the best. Finance thinks about uh, to give you a profit in short period. But you have a long period. Uh, it, it, this is not no profit, but profit for a long time. Less profit in short period, but forever. And uh, uh, I give you another... Uh, the, um, uh, another uh, fact, that if you look at uh, uh, finance, uh, uh, the global GDP, uh, you have 70,000 billion dollars. But the amount of global finance activity was calculated in 2013, 993 billion dollars. Where are this kind of, mo uh, uh, where is this kind of money? You don't use this money for improving the economy. And think about Italy. Italy is bad. But now finance is good. Why real economy is bad and finance is good? Something doesn't work. It's true that, like Anuja said, that you think about future. But we don't have future. But people who finance gain. So something don't, don't work. Because uh, you, you should have a finance who invest in real economy for helping people. Second, think about destruction of forests. If, um, I give you an example about uh, wood companies in Italy, about furniture. They have a sustainable um, um, pathway. They use forests where you can uh, uh, cut the trees, but after that you can uh, have new trees. So, in uh, 10, 20, uh, 30 years, you have a uh, forest. But if you destroy Amazonia, destroy forest in Africa, in Asia, no forest, no wood, no furniture. <laughs> you, you, it's better to have a sustainable economy. Then I give you another example about energy. Uh, okay, oil, okay, carbon. But uh, the uh, CEO of uh, uh, the most important company in Italy in oil, in, in a meeting some weeks ago, told us that in 2050, the, the more profitable uh, way of uh, having energy is no oil, no carbon, no, uh, no wind, and no uh, uh, sun, but rubbish. You can use 99% of rubbish for producing energy. And so plastic problem is resolved. You don't have this kind of old idea in Italy. No plastic, no plastic, no plastic. Oh, no plastic, you cannot have uh, uh, artificial hair. No plastic, you cannot uh, have any kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, of element to, to, to take uh, uh, goods. No, you can use plastic for energy. You can use an, uh, rubbish for energy. So you have sustainable economy. And uh, another example that I, I give you. Think about the most important uh, 
um, development in a, in a, in a, in a new economy, also about the digital economy. Think about uh, uh, the invention of uh, phone or, uh, or uh, other uh, internet uh, inventions. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs didn't think to the profit at the beginning. He was, he was studying at Stanford. He didn't study uh, electronic or informatic. He was a creative. He understood that for people was better to have electronic uh, devices in a way that everyone, also housewife, could use this. He didn't invent electronic. He was able to look at people. And uh, so you understand the creativity of human being is the beginning of new economy. If uh, I am open to you, if I understand what you need, not only if I think about money, uh, uh, because you don't understand what I need. So you understand the human being is the center of economy, is better. I give you another example. In Italy, uh, many entrepreneurs um, uh, uh, use uh, young people for a long time. It's not five o'clock uh, you go back, like, less, uh, less in America. But you had to work for me until 10 o'clock, <laughs> you know, one, uh, 12 o'clock, 10 hours a day, because you had to work. No family, no fashion. You, you have to stay in company. You think it is better. No, it's not better. Because this guy, after eight hours, is so tired that he cannot do anything. And he is angry with his uh, uh, owner, this uh, entrepreneur. Because, uh, for example, yeah, he, he can date with uh, a girl, eight o'clock. <laughs> now he cannot. No date. He was so angry. <laughs> it's better that the entrepreneur say, OK, 5 o'clock, you go back. You can have a family, date, but when you go back, you work better. I, I challenge the entrepreneur to say, what is better? Or it's better to say that uh, women shouldn't be married, or uh, women, uh, women uh, should be uh, act like uh, 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 the, the protagonist of Prada movie about, you remember, Devil, uh, uh, Prada. this kind of, of <laughs> I think, uh, and so, uh, entrepreneurs say, <laughs> okay, on. okay, uh, <laughs> entrepreneurs say, uh, you know, if you have a, a, a baby, no, it's not good, because uh, I think that, uh, uh, if you allow women to have babies to be married, they are more happy, happier and they work better, and so on. So human being is better. And second point, very important, is uh, to improve this kind of, of, of world, of economy. You have to work. You have to use the technology. Then we, when we answer the question, we can explain it. But uh, it's not true that uh, technology against uh, human being. If you are this kind of selfish man, technology against uh, you. But if you are so creative, you can use new technology for improving, for creating new job. But you need a subject, a human being, who is not... Uh, uh, um, think about, uh, and I finish, about the propaganda about uh, uh, global warming. You are worried because you are bad. You are destroying the world. Every one of us is worried. Great, okay, great, but every one of us is doing a bad thing. It's better to say, it's better to live in a good way, world or not. It's better to work all together a better world or not. I think that to help these people to work, to use our intelligence, Instead uh, of uh, saying him that he's bad, is, is uh, 
uh, the good solution. So, uh, what is the new economy, the sustainable economy? An economy where a human being, the human being that is in family, the human being mm. that uh, desire uh, goodness, the human being that the relation is, is the protagonist. And this, not, uh, this is not a perspective for going back to the Middle Age, but to, to build a new future where you can uh, overcome the problem and to go on in development. Great, thank you. So let's turn here to uh, Carlos. Carlos uh, has a very interesting story uh, of a real estate company that he started after Puerto Rico had a very significant uh, disaster that hit the country not that long ago. Um, and I think, I think you have something to share here in terms of what some of the things that Georgia just spoke about. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you uh, for having me here. Uh, I'm very excited for the opportunity. It's an incredible crowd. I've been speaking for the some of you uh, throughout the uh, yesterday night and this morning. So uh, September 20, it all starts uh, uh, September 20, 2017. Uh, we had a uh, Hurricane Maria, Category 5 hurricane that devastated the island of Puerto Rico. Uh, basically, worst natural disaster that we have uh, had in, in the island. Uh, I just brought some pictures so, that you, can guys, so you guys can uh, uh, understand uh, the magnitude of what happened in the island. We had 91.6 billion in uh, estimated damages. Uh, around 99% of the island without power between three to six months. 4,600 deaths. Uh, and it, it basically uh, shifted my uh, perspective about my profession as an architect. I had, it, it basically was the moment to take a step back and decide uh, how any, any other way that I could contribute uh, to the redevelopment of the island, okay? So, as uh, Papa Francisco in Spanish said, uh, we live in, de in a deaf world. Our time tells us uh, we have to talk less, listen more, and react. And I think that's exactly what I did and what a lot of Puerto Rican uh, uh, people started doing in the island. We, we got to react. Uh, we started uh, doing, we developed a, a small scale real estate development uh, startup, uh, specifically for sustainable uh, approach. Uh, we are driven by social impact and the need of improving residents' quality of life in their affordable housing market. The US, US, uh, uh, USA has around seven million deficit in, in public housing. Uh, and we decided that it was our time to approach that sector as a real estate developer. But most importantly, not only approach it as a developer, but also implement sustainable, sustainable design that can promote a better lifestyle and have a direct impact uh, to the community and the environment. Okay? But I'm sure all of you are asking, uh, what is sustainable design? For us, sustainable design is the intention. It's very simple. It's just the intention to reduce or to eliminate any negative environmental impact through design. This starts from the uh, uh, pre-construction and planning phase all the way to the operation of the uh, managing of, the, of that uh, facility. Uh, during the uh, pre-construction phase, we're basically doing the planning and sele material selection that, one, helps uh, uh, the environment, that helps uh, the quality of living of that space. And during the construction phase, we use recycled materials. Uh, we try to uh, do the less impact possible in, in, in the properties. And then during the operation phase, we try to integrate the tenant uh, with, the, with our mindset uh, by providing them a uh, bike, providing them uh, different type of, of events so that they can be aware. Uh, recyc we use recycling, uh, and uh, we actually promote recycling with some uh, discount on the, on, the, uh, on the rent and helping them uh, with the process. We send them uh, educational material 
And I think that is, it is our opportunity uh, and the path that we choose to educate community on, uh, on how to, to, to react uh, to uh, a bigger problem. But that our mindset, it's, that's our approach. That's the scale that we, that we feel comfortable and, and that, we wanna, that we want to address. Uh, we must understand the importance of the built environment. Uh, this is much more than, than brick and mortar. Uh, it is about creating safe, resilient, and integrated space for all kinds of person. Uh, here in the United States, there's a lot of uh, incentive for and tax credit for uh, big scale development that uh, provides uh, developers uh, to reduce uh, cost, uh, but there's not much for single family low income housing. And I believe that it's a, it's a sector that, that needs it. We're all on the same page. Uh, we're here uh, looking for alternatives. Uh, and uh, this is a sector that really needs it. That's, uh, uh, people always ask me, so what do you do different? Why, why your startup or your small development company, it's different? Or even our investors ask, I don't understand what are you bringing other than good design. I say, well, I'm not bringing anything different for you as an as a investor. Uh, I'm just doing what every, everyone who owns a house should be doing. Should be implementing uh, good lighting or LED lighting, that it's as simple as going to any, uh, any store and buying uh, that. Uh, thermal uh, insulation, the correct thermal insulation for, for the property. Uh, choosing the correct material uh, in, the, uh, in the property. And they say, well, that's something that I can do. Neighbors come to us and say, give me what you do. And we give them our specs of what we put on the property. Uh, because our mindset is that if our neighbor use the same things that we are, we are doing, and the other neighbor sees it and wants to do the same thing, we're on the right track. We're on the track of educating, on the track of convincing uh, society and the community that it's a possibility and that step by step, door by door, community by community, we're changing and we're helping the environment. Thank you, Carlos. You know, I, I want to just... <laughs> I, I, I'm really fascinated by what, what you've done. You have a hurricane that tears apart, you know, your your country where you live and and I would think the immediate response was let's just go fix stuff let's go just rebuild it the notion that you would want to integrate uh, an awareness of the environment sustainability that would necessarily be the first thing to me that would come to mind so I'm fascinated by by that thinking like what 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 drives that I mean is in, it doesn't sound like you're just trying to be a good guy you are running a business and this is doable Yes, uh, well, it all started, well, we have to go back uh, uh, to 1994, 95. Uh, there was another hurricane, did a lot of damage to Puerto Rico, not as so much as uh, Hurricane Maria. But one of the biggest problems that we had during this hurricane, and I don't know if we can put back the, uh, the pictures on the screen, but the, the biggest problem that we had is that people do the rebuilding, the reconstruction, not the correct way. They, they weren't up to code. That they just did it desperate, and it's totally understandable. If you don't have any roof on your house, you're just going to put it back the way you can. A couple of years, fast forward a couple of years later, pay the consequences again. Uh, we don't have uh, sane people, mostly poor people, or low income uh, 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 population. They just suffering the same thing. The only difference here is that. Now they are very, very conscious because it's sweat. They're, they work hard to be able to pay for a for, uh, uh, wood panel and put it on the roof. So say, hey, it already happened to me. It, it was very hard the first time. It's going to be even harder this time. So I'm just going to take a step back 
and try to figure out how to make it happen. Part of our work, in addition of our, uh, our uh, investments and low-income housing, uh, green space startup, uh, we also help Habitat for Humanity. Uh, and, and our work with Habitat for Humanity is, is helping get the fund to Puerto Rico, and at the same time, use that fund correctly. You have a lot of uh, uh, people who give the money to Habitat for Humanity and say, okay, yes, when are, when are we going to start uh, to build? I just want to see the houses in a couple of months. It's not that way. We want to do it the right way. We want to look for the correct location uh, to, to put those houses and, and, and do it the correct way. So it has been a, a great opportunity. You got to understand, you know, construction industry has 36% of uh, consume, it consumes 36% of the worldwide energy and 40% uh, of CO2 emission. So it is important uh, for next generation of the industry to take this in consideration and use it as, a, as their mindset. <clears throat> if we're going to do construction anyways, if we're going to be in the business, this is a business. If we're going to be in the business, why we don't consider alternatives that are available? Technology keeps developing new products, uh, keeps evolving. Well, let's, let's, let's take a step back and decide what's the best way to do it. And that's in the process that we are right I, now. I think that's just, it's just very compelling because um, there's nothing automatic about this, right? That, that uh, one, people have been doing development, real estate development a long time. The notion that you factor this in, that you can, you can innovate in how you build properties, as we've talked about previously, uh, and develop this for, you know, Section 8 housing, low-income housing. This is not just about sticking a bunch of, you know, expensive solar panels you know, on, on a rich person's house, right, so they can be more energy efficient. This is about actually bringing this to a, a, a more pervasive level of development. And, and it originates because you look at the situation, there's a need for housing for, for uh, the poor, uh, and there's a need to take this issue of the climate seriously and to be, be creative, as Georgia was just talking about, in front of that, I think is really quite uh, impressive. Also, it's, it's very important to, to understand that uh, this is, this is not because I'm interested in, 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 in just being the green guy here and saying, hey, we're just about sustainable design. It's a commitment that all the investors, uh, designer, contractor, uh, development team has to, they, all of us have to be on the same boat. We have to be on board uh, because it affects all of us directly or indirectly. So talk one, one made the last point here about how you ended up having to build uh, your proposal in Baltimore first, actually, yes. before you could do it in Puerto Rico. Yes, actually, our, our first phase of, of uh, trial and error, if we can call it that way, uh, was in Baltimore. Uh, Puerto Rico doesn't have, and, and I'm just gonna do a disclaimer, we, we, don't, we don't have any tax incentives. Uh, we don't, we just buy the property and, 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 and do it as a, any, any other person here can just buy the property and do the, the flip, if we can call it a flip. So we went to the bank and said, we want to get a loan. We're going to buy this portfolio of houses, and uh, we are going to flip them. And we're going to put them, we're going to adjust them to put uh, sustainable features. The bank in Puerto Rico told us, we can't. We don't have any, any, any way of, of helping you other than just buying a, a regular house. And uh, with the regular interest, we're in a financial crisis, so the interest rates in Puerto Rico are extremely high. And, and uh, we said, we're backed up, we, we have worked with Habitat, we have other big players that can come with us, we don't care. Even though we had a huge hurricane that devastated the island, and that should have been the, the correct timing to do uh, uh, a rebuild. So we went to Baltimore, and uh, the reason we choose Baltimore, I guess a lot of people uh, here know about Baltimore, it has been passing through a, a, a process also very similar to the one in Puerto Rico. And we went there, they were completely open to the idea. Uh, and we actually finished the property in Baltimore with our own uh, money uh, to prove not only the bank, but also prove the investors. Uh, that was another key part of the, of the process. We, we had to put our money and say, hey, we already did it. Uh, 
Yes, maybe there are other industries that if you're just only thinking about numbers, it gives you a better return. But here it's not just about money. Here it's about contributing and putting back something into society and to the community. And, uh, and they, were all, they jumped on board and, and we're making it happen. You know, I think there, there's something very uh, compelling about this aspect of your story because um, certainly in an ideal world, we'd say, boy, you'd wish that the bank in Puerto Rico or the government or someone had given the appropriate incentives when there's a real crisis in Puerto Rico to do it. But the fact that you used, again, your, you had a conviction about what you're doing, you found a place, it happens to be Baltimore, where you could do this with the banking system there and the, and the incentive structure, and, and prove the concept. And then we're able to go back to Puerto Rico and say, hey, listen, this works. Let us do it. And then you could do it there. I think that also is a, is a pa part of this innovation that, that Georgia just spoke about um, in how, how as in, the, in the private sector, as individuals, you know, we can operate not necessarily waiting for the powers that be to, you know, to figure things out. I think that's just really commendable. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. So with us today, um, we also have Justin Welter, Lauren Kelly, and Nick Stokeman. All three of them work in the United States, um, uh, small firms, their own firm, larger firms. And, and, and really, the, 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 in, the intention of asking them to be with us today was to, was to really take this exploration um, that uh, Giorgio spoke about, right? That, that, that what the Pope's invitation is to this event in Assisi next month, and really the purpose of this event is to say, look, there isn't a theory it's not about a different theory, uh, you know, Catholic, capitalistic, whatever theory, um, but an exploration of, of looking at our, our needs as human beings, these things that we value, and how do we live them, right? And so I think, I think each of them has, has brought a, a question here today and their particular experience um, that we're going to pose to Giorgio and help us answer. We'll start with Justin. So going back to your comments, Giorgio, um, specifically, you know, talking about an inclusive economy, how do we rectify the advances in, in technology and kind of the replacement of jobs that come with that with an inclusive economy. So to give you some context, I work for a startup in San Francisco. We are actively working to replace sales and marketing teams with artificial intelligence, AI, whatnot. So like I am literally working to replace my own job and the jobs of my peers, right? And so the question becomes, with that said, how do we make work human while we are actively working to take humans out of work? I don't uh, speak about the Pope, I speak about McKinsey, that is not a Catholic uh, <laughs> uh, company. But McKinsey says that uh, humans will be still indispensable because expected productivity gain can only be achieved if men work side by side with the machines. Think about it. It seems that only one in 10 employees will be replaced by machines. But one in three is at a risk of change. We must be contrasted with investment in training. Between 2013 and 2017, it is estimated that the growth of these new figures was 280%. What does it mean? And moreover, uh, recent research foresees that within five years, about a third of this skill required in the labor market will concern skills that are not considered central today. That, so, if uh, there is not a human being with his intelligence, okay, machines will substitute us. Robots will be the only workers. But if we use intelligence, we can use in ar uh, artificial intelligence and new devices to have new jobs. Think about uh, uh, 18th centuries. There is the Malthus theory. The Malthus theory was saying, no future for humanity. Too many people, so it's impossible to go on. What uh, did it happen? Intelligence, reason, affection, build new possibilities, no agriculture, uh, industry, uh, uh, market, new possibilities. Now it's the same. If this kind of man, able to look at reality, uh, is, stands in front of this uh, uh, um, 
the, um, new uh, devices, we can build new possibilities. Think about it. Uh, how many new jobs with Google, Facebook, uh, uh, LinkedIn, uh, with, uh, with uh, um, uh, internet, uh, social media? Social media substituted uh, mails for, 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 uh, because no, uh, less uh, mails. But how many new jobs? How many new jobs you can have with Zoom, with Skype, uh, stay in contact, remote way? How many possibilities? So the problem is not is only this. If we say, OK, new possibilities, new jobs. We have, we have to invent these jobs. If you think that the human being, uh, uh, like some neuroscience scientists say, is only a mechanism, we are destroyed it. Otherwise, you will invent new jobs. But think about uh, uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk now is better than NSSA. It's better because he invented a new way of going to the space with this intelligence, uh, new possibilities of jobs for new, for, uh, for new people. Think about it, then I stop. When I took my degrees, no internet, no phone calls, no photocopies, <laughs> nothing. Yeah, you're old, Giorgio. I, I'm <laughs> 19, 19, 1979. <laughs> Eh? No uh, typewriter, uh, video scripture. Think about it. I stay there. Oh, <laughs> world is, is over. Instead, now I have new possibilities. How many new jobs with this kind of possibilities? So the problem is this human being can be in front of this reality. We don't know how. But we know that it's possible. For, because do you think that uh, life was better uh, before these uh, uh, inventions or is better now? We have to use this. And therefore, I say, OK, if you, stay, uh, if you don't stay, uh, you don't do anything, it's worse. But if you are intelligent, we will have new jobs and the jobs able to uh, overcome uh, inequalities because many people in, the, in the many parts of the world can have better job, better than to do something similar to Charlie Chaplin, do you remember modern, modern <laughs> war? Eh? <laughs> it's better to do this or it's better to use your intelligence? Choice okay. for you. Uh, so. We are, we are getting close on time, so I want to make sure we get both of your questions. Uh, Laura, please. Great. So in his letter announcing the upcoming event in Assisi, Pope Francis tells us, uh, quote, there in Assisi, St. Francis stripped himself of all worldliness in order to choose God as the compass of his life, becoming poor with the poor, a brother to all. His decision to embrace poverty also gave rise to a vision of economics that remains most timely, end quote. So this example is beautiful from a spiritual and saintly perspective, but comparing it to today's economy makes it seem idealistic, impractic impractical, and somewhat removed. Um, and to put it in very general or oversimplified terms, today's economy is enabled by competition with people at both the individual and organizational levels striving to be better than their peers. Um, and today's economy has and is serving many people. It's improved the quality of life for the working and middle classes and has advanced technology, to your points, and the limits of what man is capable of across industries. So how do we reconcile Francis's example and Pope Francis's call to follow it with the economy we're living in today. Uh, do you know uh, uh, about uh, soft skills on, on cognitive skill, on karate skill? One uh, Nobel Prize uh, in economy, James Heckman, began to study uh, this kind of skills uh, in the 90s. He discussed the, the, the standard test uh, uh, in uh, American school saying, if you only think to uh, hard skills, knowledge, 
with this uh, standard test, you destroy a part of intelligence. You mean like technical skills? Eh? You mean like technical skills? Technical skills. Yeah. Uh, my name is Hard Skills, but in, in yeah, this yeah, book, sure. Hard Skills means uh, I know uh, uh, some uh, news. I don't know. I don't know. I know that Lincoln was an uh, uh, American president, but the, the question is Lincoln was an a, a, a presi uh, American president or the quarterback of uh, uh, a, a team sure. uh, or a singer. Huh? Okay, you write uh, your uh, close uh, answer. Instead, there are different kinds of skills. That means uh, uh, creativity, empathy, uh, openings. This kind of, uh, of uh, qualities cannot be uh, developed only remote. They need sharing. So in the, uh, in the area, in the, in the moment, in the period of uh, uh, social media where you are far from other people, you need more connection. Because this kind of uh, uh, skills can uh, grow if you are in connection, if you share, if you meet. So in this moment, you need a uh, new, uh, new way of working. But uh, another way of working where uh, to stay in relationship is interesting. Look at this. But this is the same uh, you, you, human position that human and Christian position. The human being is not selfish, but is a, a relationship uh, um, uh, creature. That you need uh, relationship, affection, encounters to grow. This is only for also for profit uh, world. Because uh, until uh, uh, 40 years ago, the same technique was going on for 40 years. Now everything changes. You need this kind of soft skills. This kind of soft skills need sharing. Like here, we can substitute your encounter with a, a TV transmission, where every one of us is at home looking at television. It's different. Um. Yeah, so Pope Francis is proposing a new approach to business uh, in the economy that start from the human person, that look out for the poor and vulnerable. I'm kind of paraphrasing from the letter we read, and that doesn't exclude anyone. For many entrepreneurs, ho however, the difficulty of starting from this perspective is that can make any business decision almost impossibly complex. Growing a business means hiring new people and letting go of others. It means giving raises to certain employees and not to others. A new technology may simplify a process, but means certain jo jobs or roles are no longer necessary. So as an entrepreneur, when I read this proposal, in some ways it feels unrealistic because it, it feels like it's saying, hey, you entrepreneurs, business owners, CEOs, it's your job to make sure everything's fair and equitable, where no one is left behind. However, if entrepreneurs, business owners, were to really take the entirety of, this, of the Pope's proposal seriously, it seems like we'd always be at a standstill because there's always gonna be somebody adversely affected from any uh, given decision. So I guess my main question is like, are there simple practical ways we can bring the principle of the human person he's proposing into our work while still ensuring we're making like sound wise business decisions in the process? People told me, well, one uh, manager in, uh, in, uh, in California, gave me the new difference between manager and entrepreneur. Manager is able to go on in an economy that is done. With this rule, I am able to, to guide a company and to go on with this scheme, these rules. Entrepreneur is different. Entrepreneur says, like you, uh, Pope Francis is an idealist, is a utopia. But entrepreneur is able to, to build something new because you need vision. For building new economy of Pop France, you need vision. You need something similar to Cristoforo Colombo. I don't know, I know that now Cristoforo Colombo is, uh, <laughs> but uh, I like Cristoforo Colombo because otherwise it would be impossible to work encounter because uh, I, was, I was in, in Europe and you know, it's impossible, but Cristoforo Colombo had vision. No one could think about America. 
each was thinking about Asia, he began. But how many people told Cristoforo Colombo, it's impossible to go beyond Gibilterra. There, there, there is only water and there is monsters. Stay here. It's impossible. And uh, uh, think about Magellano. I think about uh, Galileo Galilei. Everyone who began something new had vision. Starting from the idea, uh, the evidence that they, uh, they, we had, we had to risk. You, uh, with your job, you and you, like in Bruce Brother, you and you. <laughs> Everybody needs somebody. You and you can build something new. If you have this vision, you, you can build a different uh, company where human being is respected. And uh, I remember when in Italy I began Company of Work, that is an um, association of uh, little and medium work, and I spoke with Father Giussani. Father Giussani told me, I didn't have an idea of, guide, uh, of guiding a, a company of uh, wars, or comp of uh, um, societies, and so on. And it told me, the, the suggestion is, you have to demonstrate it is possible to build, to work, to be an entrepreneur, without being against Christian experience. But what does it mean? You have to explore it. You have to, to give, to use your intelligence and your faith to, to see solutions that are new. And, I, uh, and uh, you understand that uh, you have to build something new. But if you live and the, your faith is for, for parish, in private life, for family, and so on, then when you are in your job, you say it's impossible. If it's impossible, it's impossible. You have to risk. You have to risk starting for your f fashion, faith, creativity, intelligence, to build a new world. But think about the US. The, 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 the spectacle, the show of last uh, night, uh, the America wasn't, was impossible because the, the first pioneer went to the wild uh, environment. They begin something new. And uh, many people said, no, no, stay here. Not, not go in India. Indians, uh, animals, cold. Instead, they went and they built a new society. So for answering you, we have to use ourselves. No uh, Trump, no mm, in rich people, but we have to build a new society with our job. Because uh, these suggestions of the Pope are not uh, uh, mandatory, order, guidelines, are suggestions. It doesn't tell us how, uh, what uh, we should do. It suggests us to use our intelligence. And I think that if we use this, we can build different kinds of companies different kind of work, different kind of, uh, of societies. And we have to give testimonies of this. This is our duty, not only in private life, but also in economic life. It's time to go beyond and uh, using our creativity. And uh, after that, next year, we will have an, a, a meeting about it with uh, 400 uh, intervention, and every one of you will uh, speak about uh, what he did uh, of newness in his job and the people who are entrepreneurs about it. So we are building a new world. So you all have your homework assignment. <laughs> um, well, thank you all. Let me just say a couple of words here before we conclude. Um, uh, you know, I was really provoked, Giorgio, from a lot of what you were saying and what would emerge today about... You had to build a new finance, yeah. okay? <laughs> that was clear. Um, um, that that uh, what, what I find so interesting about this is that there's a willingness to say, look, let's put our desire for living in a more inclusive world. Let's put our desire to build a successful business. Let's put our desire to live in a more sustainable 
ecological world, you know, our desire to live charity, as Francis of Assisi did, let's put that in front of us and allow our creativity and innovation to start to respond. Innovation isn't merely to uh, maximize uh, business profitability. Innovation affects all of our desires, all of our needs. We can put them in play uh, and allow uh, that uh, perspective to, to answer. Uh, I think your point about this Malthusian view of the world, which comes up repeatedly, this idea that we're going to run out of stuff, we're going to run out of things. You know, it was back in the 70s that we were told we're going to run out of energy, and that hasn't happened. We're going to we'd run out of food, and that hasn't happened. It's because the, the capacity for us as human beings to innovate is really quite remarkable. Um, but to orient ourselves uh, across the human dimension, not, not narrowly, is, is, is really essential in all this. The other thing about this, I think, conversation that I think Georgia just, uh, I think, set forth, which I think is compelling, is there isn't, um, again, there isn't a theory here um, that is being uh, proposed. Uh, this, this, the nature of this whole event was, let's talk about things that are intrinsically important as human beings. Let's look at a real example of someone who is living this, and, and then let's raise some questions. Questions that I think that all of us can carry in our own workplace. How do we live this call, uh, uh, that, that we're, do, uh, the different things that we talked about today in our particular circumstances, and allow ourselves to be moved and be creative in front of uh, those, uh, those needs. So thank you, Georgia, for your time here today. Thank you, Carlos, thank you. for coming up from Puerto Rico, and the three of you for, for being on stage here with us today. And I think we have some announcements.